Hey guys, I'm going to do a little video to explain how to export beats via MIDI to your sequencer. What happens sometimes is with the Tempest, you're working on a beat, and I like to use the internal sequencer rather than a, a new end or Cubase, because um, you have your hands on the pads, you're playing with the, with the Tempest, you can change the sounds directly. For me, the workflow is faster to produce loops. Then you can switch on the mutes, on the solo. You can. This is, it's very creative for me to be uh, hands on the tempest to produce sounds. But there's one point where you want to export um, this this as a MIDI file to your DAW so that you can go a bit further in the production. Let's go to um, how to do that. So for the moment, the tempest is in its basic mode, if I press play, it will play on itself. So now I'm going to set it on slave. So for this, I'm going to category MIDI clock and I will set the clock to slave. So I have set new endo to send a MIDI clock to my output port one. So therefore, when I will press play, on the on new endo now the tempest will start to play All right. now the second thing we have to look at is again in category i'm going to switch to the mini midi polyphonic keyboard play and there i'm going to scroll down and i'm going to read on the fifth line sequencer output channel I'm, I'm going to set it to one doesn't really matter uh 10 and 11 are used for something else anyway i'll leave it to one in in the line six sequencer sound that's the 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 pad you will export via midi right now it's set in b16 because i rarely use sound bank B. I go for alpha 1 to alpha 16. Sometimes I go to sound B for some synth to 1 to 6 maximum. I never use that amount of, of pads. So uh, B16 is uh, set by default because I'm sure I'm not going to use this. If you set this to say alpha 1, now the alpha one is going to be removed from the sequencer. It's going to be sent via the MIDI out. So you will not hear it on the, on the Tempest. I'm going to start to export one pad that is alpha 12 because that's my kick that's set here. So now when I'm going to press play on Numendo, Tempest is going to start to play. All pads are going to play, but alpha 12 is going to be sent via MIDI and recorded to a MIDI track. So on the MIDI track, I set it to uh, my MIDI port and it's going to record all MIDI inputs coming in and also it's going to send it back to the Tempest. So to avoid a loop and there's also going to be a bit of offset, I could set this to off for the moment. So nothing's going out of that MIDI track, it's only listening to all MIDI outputs, therefore recording what's going out of the Tempest. So now I'm going to press to set um, first my timeline starting on a bar because I want the Tempest to be synchronized with Nuendo and when I'm going to press play you can see 111 we are at the beginning of the sequence and I'm going to start a loop that it's that is eight bars long so I'm going to press record now on Nuendo <laughs> You realize that we don't hear the kick anymore. It's not played in alpha 12. Not sure you can hear anything really because sound is pretty much distorted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We come at the end of my loop. And here I can stop. All right, so I recorded eight bars. And if I go in the MIDI region that has been recorded, these are all my kicks. The good thing with that technique is I can find my how I played it. So you have all the velocities and how it's been recorded. Now it's easier to go here and edit the velocities if in your uh, Tempest you were not happy with some events. For example, this here, Alpha 12, is my kick. You can see two hits, 
one, two, three hits before, and that's what you find on the on the MIDI track. Two hits and one, two, three, four just bef before the next uh, the next beat, the next bar. Um, now here I can edit uh, uh, this velocity. For example, if I select it, I can see that the velocity is 112, which is what the Tempest says here, 112. And the second uh, hit is 106. Let's scroll to the second. Oop. And it's 106. So now I have my MIDI kick here. I will have to make sure that there's no offset uh, I will zoom on the beat. It should be right on the beat. It's not. So, so there's a little offset that I will need to manage later. But for the moment, I'm going to leave this like this. I'm going to record all the pads I want and move them all at once to remove that offset. So I'm going out of that region and I'm going to record another pad. Yes, it takes some time. <laughs> so I'm going back to the system. I recorded alpha one. That is my kick. I can go say for alpha one, it's a sort of a hi-hat. I'm going to do the same process, put my timeline uh, at the beginning of the bar, uh, Tempest is still in slave, and I'm going to record eight bars from here. So now the kick is back in the sound because we're not on alpha 12, but alpha one that is playing these little hi-hats are not uh, available in the mix. That's it, I finished my 8 bars and now you have the idea, you will have to go to each and every pads that you want to export. You maybe not need to have everything, but you need to scroll to all the pads you need to have the entire sequence going on. So I'll fast forward to this, I'm going to do all the, the pads from alpha 1 to 16, these are the ones I'm using here. A few moments later. So that's it. I recorded all the tracks and the pain is not over. You will realize if you select all your tracks and you open them that all of the pads have been recorded to the same note. Here it's C3. Uh, if you play that back, if now I go back to my MIDI track and I activate um, port 110, well, let's, I'm going to remove the Tempest as a slave so it's off and I'm going to play this it's quite interesting but it's clearly not what I programmed because everything is sent to C3 and C3 is let me check it's my B1 pad so for example I want this to hit alpha 12 so I'm going to look for alpha 12 I think it's a B flat that's it now at least I have the kick back I'm going to isolate the kick so you will have to do that with all of these regions uh, that's a problem only the synth is playing the notes correctly which is really sad. Anyway, the second problem you'll face is if you look at all the notes I recorded, they are not on the on, on, on the tempo. There's an offset. So now that I isolate uh, the, the kick is visible over here, I'm going to select everything. I know that my kick was quantized in the sequencer, so I'm just going to grab it and move it to the closest. Uh, beat but while doing this you will realize that oops there are some there's some mistakes still I mean mistakes or randomness going on I think that's because the zoom is quite strong but I think this is because of the slave um, uh, the MIDI slave the sync that is not perfect so if you want to go crazy you just can select everything and quantize everything so now it's gonna be back. I'm just going to leave it like that the last thing I want you to see is that on the very first beat of my kick, it's over there. This is part of my... It has been recorded, 
when I recorded the kick. So I don't know, a ghost note, a random note, an, an, an error, I don't know, but pay attention that maybe some extra notes will come in. So that's the entire process. I will save you uh, remapping all these regions, which I need to do f because I want to use that, um, that beat. But that's what you have to do. Uh, go to system, uh, select uh, sequencer out channel, and all the pads you want to export one by one, record them in your sequencer, remap all the notes uh, to the proper pad, and make sure everything is back in tempo. Big work. <laughs> So anyway, I hope it was helpful. Please like, share, comment, and uh, see you in the next one.